Well, good evening. It's good to see everyone here tonight. I say see. It's good to see the names and the phone numbers. At least on my computer, I can't tell who everyone is. Um, I can see some names and I can see phone numbers and see, uh, let's see if I can pull that list back up here. Um, it was on here somewhere. Uh, there it is. And so I see some phone numbers and some names. And so I'm very glad that you're here with us tonight. And uh, we'll get started right away. Brother Abraham, come and lead us. Our brother Abraham. Uh, brother, that would, brother, brother Abraham, I'm sure, is chuckling right now. Brother Armfield, come and, and uh, lead us in our first congregational. Can you hear me? I was told someone texted me and said that you can't hear me. I don't know if I'm being heard or not. This went smoothly Sunday. All right, somebody text me and said we can hear hear me. I can't hear brother. Um, I can't hear brother Armfield. Oh, muted by the host is what he says. All right, so let's see here. Go back to. There we go, brother Armfield. I think. Brother there Armfield. we go. There we go. Hey, brother. All Armfield. right. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this is the third time we're doing this. We should have it down by now. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. We'll work till Jesus comes. I was looking at that second verse, and I have no, I do not know that second verse. So we're going to sing the first, third, and last verse together. O oh, land of rest, for thee I sigh, when will the moment come? When I shall lay my armor by and dwell at peace at home. We'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work. Till Jesus comes, we'll work. Till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. To Jesus Christ I fled for rest. He bade me cease to roam and lean for comfort on his breast till he conduct me home. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. I sought at once my Savior side no more. My steps shall roam, with him I'll brave death's chilling tide and reach my heavenly home. We'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. Thank you, Brother Armfield. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll start the service with a word of prayer. Just a couple um, to mention. Remember to pray for our messengers, especially those sent out of our church. Um, uh, we'll have two that everyone, I believe, knows. We'll, we won't mention, but uh, remember um, all of our messengers, and then specifically the uh, Edwards and the Hearts and the Sharps. Uh, pray that God blesses during this time, keep them safe, healthy, uh, but also the finances. And then our healthcare workers in our church, 
And think about uh, Ms. Sarah Thiesing, got a testimony or a prayer request and a testimony from her tonight. Ms. Shippy, uh, Shippy Roy and Cassie Mushippi, uh, uh, Beatrice Abraham, uh, Shireen Philippos, Suman Penagonda, and then Priya over in uh, Kenya. And so be in prayer for those. And uh, I'm, I've, I've not gotten bold enough to ask someone to pray and, and unmute them because I don't know exactly what state everyone is in. I can't see. And so I'd hate to uh, uh, not, honestly, I'm going to say this. And I don't know where everybody's at or what they're doing, but it's, it's church. Uh, set a time aside, turn everything else off. Um, uh, I put on a, a suit and tie uh, for both services on Sunday, even though I'm sitting at my, my kitchen table. And uh, I don't know that you necessarily have to do that, but, but it'd be good that you're not, uh, you know, lounging back on your bed or on your, uh, in your, on your couch or something. It'd be good that you sit up and pay attention and set time aside for uh, the uh, church service. Uh, but that being said, I don't know what everybody's at. I don't want to get somebody mid-chip uh, in their mouth and uh, don't know. <laughs> I, I hope no one's doing that, but I, I can't tell. I can't see if you're doing that or not. Some may be eating their supper while they're going to church. I don't know. I really would like you to uh, think it's uh, uh, church service is important enough to set time aside for it. But that being said, I haven't been bold enough to ask someone to pray yet. So I'm going to have a word of prayer and uh, we'll get into the service. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness to us and your blessings. Lord, we're thankful uh, for the opportunity that we have. I've uh, gotten many texts and messages uh, from folks in our church the last uh, few days about what a blessing it is, even though we can't meet. Uh, n normally in, 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 the, uh, uh, the, in a building, uh, our church can still congregate you know, in a way. And uh, here on, on this platform, we can see who's there and, and uh, even uh, in some ways uh, communicate back and forth. And we're thankful for our church, Lord, uh, our, our church family. Uh, uh, over the last few days, I've, I've talked to many members who said they missed being in church and missed seeing people. I'm just very thankful uh, for, the, for the faithfulness of your people and, and the opportunity, the privilege that it is to, to uh, lead and, and be the pastor. Lord, I just pray you bless. Uh, I pray you protect our, our, our congregation, uh, that uh, no one in our congregation uh, would uh, get uh, coronavirus or that you protect us from that specifically and, and keep us all safe and healthy. And then other viruses and illnesses protect us or be especially, Lord, I pray you be with uh, the Edwards and the Hearts, the Sharps at this time, that uh, you would uh, bless the, them. That I know that uh, not getting meetings this, uh, during this time, I pray uh, bless them financially and keep them healthy, Lord, during this time. And then our healthcare workers, think about those who are uh, on the front lines, if you will, uh, in regard to um, taking care of the sick. And we think about Miss um, uh, Thiesing and Miss and uh, Shippey and, and um, uh, Miss Roy, Mrs. Roy, and and uh, Brother uh, Pentagonda, and and uh, um, uh, Shiffy, and uh, Shireen, and uh, uh, Beatrice, and and Priya, and and uh, I don't think I'm uh, missing anyone. I just pray that uh, that uh, Your will be done, and and You protect them, bless them, Lord, uh, help them to be a blessing to others, be a witness. Uh, several uh, Sunday night mentioned that they have an opportunity during this time to to be a blessing, to, to give the gospel and uh, um, show others that, that we don't live, we don't have a spirit of fear, Lord. We uh, have a, a spirit of, uh, of love and power and a sound mind. Help us to be witnesses during this time, we pray. Bless the services here that we're about to have. We pray that uh, in all these things, we'd honor and glorify you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We will do prayer letters, praises, and prayer requests uh, but I'm gonna do, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We, instead of having a prayer time in the middle of the service like we would do right now, uh, or like we would normally do at this time, um, we will have that at the end. And I'd like to ask you to take uh, 10 or 15 minutes. I'll try to, to finish up about 8.15 with the preaching and everything. No promise, Brother Finner, no promise. Uh, but that's the goal right now. And so that you can have uh, 10 or 15 minutes to pray with your family. We'd finish up at normally time, normal time. I, I, I'd, I'd like you to, uh, to do that at the end of the service rather than uh, in the middle of the service. And so we'll do prayer letters, praises, and prayer requests at the end of the service. Uh, but right now, if uh, Brother uh, Armfield, if I can figure out 
how to unmute you or if you if I haven't muted you if you've muted yourself if you can unmute and uh, lead us in our next song okay we'll work uh, we'll work we just did that one when I survey the wondrous cross let's sing all four verses together this evening when I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and for contempt on all of my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast. Save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them. To his blood, see from his hand, his hands is sweet. Sorrow and the love flow mingled down. Did such love and sorrow meet for thorns compose so rich a crown were the whole realm of nature mine that were a present far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life my all. Thank you, Brother Armfield. And uh, just a couple quick announcements. If uh, everyone would remember uh, to uh, text in at the end of the service. Sunday morning, we did a good job. Sunday evening, there was a few that I think watched but didn't text in. It's helpful. Sorry, I'm playing with the laptop. And so I know that it's bouncing around. I'll stop doing that. Um, it's hard to sit still. I've had several people not complain, but mention that, uh, that I don't sit still. And so I apologize. I'm going to work on that, uh, sitting still. I, I'm, I'm sitting down and, and you're lucky I'm doing that because normally I'm running across both sides of the platform, but, uh, I'm going to try to sit still and leave the, leave the laptop alone and not, not play with that. Um, anyway, if you can text in, let us know who's uh, in. And then uh, um, visitation packets uh, we had available at church this afternoon. They'll be available all day tomorrow. Mrs. Martin will be in the office tomorrow. And uh, there is uh, similar to what we did during the, uh, uh, during the uh, Saturation Saturday, uh, we have a letter from, from me and uh, then a track and a, a, an envelope and a, a um, list of addresses within the zip code of the church. And we have more than we can uh, use right now. I think we have 2,000. I think we've just used about 200 of them. So we have about 1,800 left. A few people came by this afternoon and took some of those. Uh, 
if you're if you'd like to come by if you text us uh, we're in and out of the office right now um, just for multiple reasons one is that it's spring break and so we're both mrs. Martin and I are trying to to uh, alternate days where we can be in the office she was in yesterday and I was in today she'll be in tomorrow I'll try to be in uh, a good portion of Friday I'm also trying to spend some time with the family for spring break and get around and do some things and then work around the house as well so um, uh, next week we'll have a little more normal office hours even though we won't be having school and and uh, um, won't be meeting at church uh, however having said all of that I'm killing time or wasting time here um, if you come by the church and grab some uh, letters you can you can just write a note at the bottom of the letter and uh, stuff it in the envelope put a track in there and uh, label it and uh, you know I, I really think that that uh, there are churches everywhere and you've received them I'm sure that have a mass mail out and uh, have a label on it and, and has your name on it uh, but I really feel like if you got something um, that was that was hand um, addressed uh, we can't really go to door to door like we've done in the past or like we normally do um, but if, if we take the time that to the individual effort uh, to write down a, a note on a letter and then address it out I really think it that we can be a blessing to those in our in our community and uh, try to reach people for the gospel and um, and uh, bring people to church and then uh, offering if you can mail that in or drop it off uh, several did today and we appreciate that and uh, especially your missions and we we, uh, we certainly appreciate the faithfulness there o okay brother armfield you have one more congregational I believe, do we? No, okay, all right. Take your Bibles, go to the book of, I'm sorry, I couldn't remember on Wednesday night if we had two or three songs. Uh, take your Bibles and uh, turn to the book of Nehemiah. And uh, it is no secret that we are in the book of Nehemiah. My, uh, uh, often uh, kids will come up to church to me before church or, or even uh, my kids this evening before church and they said, what chapter are we in? Where are we at in the book of Nehemiah? And so uh, we are in Nehemiah and chapter 11. Chapter 11, I, I gotta be honest with you, I've struggled a bit with this, this message, um, uh, not uh, with what's here, but more of the application, applying ourselves to it. Um, we, we studied, we, we preached about Nehemiah chapter 11, verses one through 19. Last week, uh, we talked about the seven groups that had their place within the walls of Jerusalem. One-tenth of Judah and Benjamin. When we talk about Judah, remember we're talking about the southern kingdom, uh, uh, the northern kingdom, really, they didn't speak much of. Uh, Jerusalem's the capital of, uh, uh, of the, the southern kingdom of Judah. And when Nehemiah came back, that, those were the two tribes that were, that were really left uh, uh, there in and there were Israelites there you'll even meant you'll even hear the Israelites but mostly you have Judah and Benjamin uh, and, and Nehemiah comes back to Jerusalem the capital of Judah and Benjamin or Judah when you think about the the two kingdoms the divided kingdoms you have Israel to the north and Judah to the south and Judah uh, includes the tribe of Judah and the tr tribe of Benjamin and after all the things that have taken place, after all the revivals that have taken place, the rebuilding, I think we mentioned the, the, re, the, the, the rebuilding, the recounting, and the revivals, all those, that, that, that all those things that took place, um, and, and, and uh, the, uh, the great meetings that were there, they, they decided who was going to stay in Jerusalem. Jerusalem wasn't big enough for everyone, but... Uh, um, they had to spread out. And so at the beginning of chapter 11, it says, and the rulers of the people dwell at Jerusalem. The rest of the people also cast lots to bring one of 10 to dwell in Jerusalem, the holy city, and nine parts to dwell in the others. So one tenth of Judah and Benjamin were to stay there while the other nine tenths were to be placed, uh, were to, uh, to be placed in cities around Judah and Benjamin. And uh, we'll look at those cities next week. This chapter, chapter 11, is, can be divided into, I think I mentioned last week, into two parts. Uh, and that's really where I, this last week I had been studying the second part of this chapter. But really, it's three parts. 
And if we look verses 1 through 19, talk about who stays in Jerusalem. We talk about that. We preached about that last week, and I realized some couldn't uh, uh, watch uh, the video because uh, there was just we just had the men in the church, and then some of the video was uh, it kind of went in and out. And so those seven groups were rulers of Judah, and it named uh, a couple specifically, and then rulers of Benjamin, and then it named an overseer Joel. He was the overseer; he was over everything. And then it named uh, um, the second overseer. And then it named uh, uh, the, the priests and the, the Levites and the porters. Now, the, 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 those were the seven groups. And we said there was three things, God, uh, three uh, uh, lessons from our passage. One, God emphasizes godly management or leadership. He emphasized the leaders that were staying there. And then it said, and we said God expects uh, godly methodology, the organization and the order. And it's interesting how orderly it is. And for many of these leaders, it gives their, their, um, their genealogy. It goes back uh, several generations. And then God enjoys godly ministration, service. And that's kind of where we left off and talked about how that, that God appreciates service. God desires service. And then I mentioned that next week, this was last week I mentioned, that we'll see the different cities in Judah and in Benjamin that uh, that they get the other nine tenths, the other ninety percent gets spread to. But if you'll notice, I finished. We finished last week in verse number nineteen, and the cities where it starts starts in verse twenty five. And for the villages, uh, um, for the villages with their fields, some of the children of Judah dwelt at and started to name all the the towns and the villages they were in. And so we have these verses in between from verse 20 to verse number 24 that don't talk about an inheritance and don't talk about in Jerusalem and don't talk about what cities they're going to be in. And so let's talk about these group of people that are not, uh, though some of them are in Jerusalem, they're not assigned a, a, a city necessarily. Uh, um, there were some that were assigned to Jerusalem, but they weren't in, assigned and that's that's really not true when I say they weren't assigned a city. They were assigned a city. They weren't assigned a, a, an inheritance. There's two groups of people here that do not have an inheritance, whether it's in Jerusalem or whether it's in uh, um, uh, Judah and Benjamin combined, the, all the cities mentioned there. Look at verse number 20. And the residue of Israel, of the priests and the Levites, were in all the cities of Judah, everyone in his inheritance. And so it's talking about, all right, everybody else, they were in their inheritance. They were where they belonged. They were where they, what they, they had inheritance is something passed down from generation to generation. And God gave that land to their, their, their ancestors, to their forefathers, and passed it down from generation to generation. That's why when, when earlier, I think it was chapter five or six, I forget now, when Nehemiah was preaching uh, to, the, to the, uh, uh, the nobles, about uh, um, using, uh, what was the word, uh, uh, not interest, but charging, um, I know several of us saying it from, the, from your homes right now, charging um, usury, charging usury. You wouldn't believe this, but I just heard it in unison from the basement. Charging usury. Uh, they, uh, they were not supposed to be doing that past a certain time. They were supposed to give the land back to, well, they weren't supposed to be doing that at all because they were supposed to uh, uh, take the land for a payment. And then after a certain number of years, they were supposed to give it back to that, that family. So that land was never supposed to leave that family. That, and so there were families that had this inheritance in Jerusalem and then in these other cities that we'll preach about next week in Judah and Benjamin. But there are two groups here between verses 19 and verse 25, that do not have an inheritance. Verse 21, uh, we mentioned that everyone in this inheritance, but, and whenever you see the word but, you're thinking, all right, whatever just happened, we're thinking about something opposite. So instead of an inheritance, you have this other group. But the Nathanims dwelt in Ophel, and Ziha and Gispa were over the Nathanims. The overseer also of the Levites at Jerusalem were Uzai, the son of Bani, and the son of Hashabiah, and the son of Madaniah, the son of Micah, of the sons of Asaph, the singers were over the business of the house of God. 
For it was the king's commandment concerning them that a certain portion should be for the singers due for every day. And Pethahiah, the son of uh, Meshezbiel, Meshezbiel, uh, of the children of Zerah, the son of Judah, was at the king's hand in all matters concerning the people. And so this was the guy that was supposed to go back and forth. That was kind of uh, uh, the in-between, if you will, between the people and the king. To let the king know what was going on. But here in between, you have the servants, the Nathanims, and the singers, the Levites here, the sons of Asaph. There's two groups that do not have an inheritance specifically the Levites, uh, the Levites, but specifically the, the, the singers, the children of the sons of Asaph, the ones who were in charge of music. It mentions those specifically. Now, last week we mentioned the priests and Levites and their place in Jerusalem, but their place was in Jerusalem because that's where the temple was and they were serving there. It wasn't their inheritance. It wasn't that they were living there because they had to, uh, or because they had some kind of land that, they, that belonged to them. They were living there literally because they had to. They had to be serving in the house of God. And then you have here these two groups uh, in and around, and I'll explain that in a minute, in and around Jerusalem who were not given inheritance. They were the Nethanims and the, the, the sons of Asaph, the servants and the singers. And let's take a few minutes tonight and talk about both of those groups. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness. I pray that you bless the message. I pray that it'd be exactly what you want it to be. I pray you'd help me divide, uh, rightly divide the word of truth and, and preach the word of God with power. Fill me with your spirit. Lord, I pray, fill those that are listening with your spirit. I ask, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the Nethanims uh, did not have an inheritance. Now, in my opinion, and I think I can have, I have a strong uh, a biblical uh, explanation for this, but in my opinion, it does not say specifically, but in my opinion, I do not believe the Nethanims were Hebrew. I believe they were Gentiles, and no Gentiles were to have an inheritance in Israel. And this is true today, and we'll talk about that next week. The Nethanims were servants and the sons of servants. And I can't be sure where they came from, to be sure. Uh, there are several theories. Um, I've, I've seen several theories, and, and I don't like to really get into theories, but I can say this. Uh, most of them have to do with some kind of Canaanites that were servants. My opinion, this is just my, my, uh, my belief where they come, came from. If you take your Bible and go to 2 Chronicles chapter 2. 2 Chronicles chapter 2. And uh, verse number, let's look at verse 12 first. Then Huram, the king of Tyre, answered in writing, answering to Solomon. The, what's going on right now is Solomon is building the temple that David collected for, David his father collected for, and Solomon is now, Solomon is now building the temple. Then Huram, the king of Tyre, and, and Solomon asked other kings around, specific ones, to help him. And for, for certain things that to, to uh, use in the, in the temple of God. Then Huram the king of Tyre answered in writing, which he sent to Solomon, because the Lord hath loved his people, <coughs> excuse me, he hath made thee king over them. Huram said, moreover, blessed be the Lord God of Israel that made heaven and earth, who hath given to David uh, the king a wise son, endued with prudence and understanding that might build a house for the Lord and a house of his kingdom. And now I have sent a cunning man endued with understanding of Huram, my fathers, the son of a woman of the daughter of Dan, and, uh, uh, and his father was a man of Tyre, skillful in work in gold, and in silver, and brass, and iron, and stone, and in timber, in purple, and blue, and in fine linen, and in crimson, also to give, uh, um, uh, also to give, to, to grave any manner of graving, and to find out every device which shall be put to them, with thy, with thy cunning men, and with the cunning men of my Lord David thy father. Now therefore the wheat and the barley, the oil and the wine, which thy Lord hath spoken of, let him send unto his servants. And we will cut wood out of Lebanon, as much as thou shalt need, and we will bring it to thee in floats by sea to Joppa, and thou shalt carry it to Jerusalem. And Sol Solomon numbered all the strangers that were in the land of Israel after the numbering wherewith David his father had numbered them, and they were found in 150,000 and 3,600. Uh, uh, 3, 
and he set three score and 10,000 of them to be bearers of burdens and four score thousand to be hewers in the mountain and 3,600 overseers to set the people a work. Now, I, I can't be 100% certain, but I believe these are the ones who we call, call the Nethinims. The Nethinims, it's very clear, were, were uh, always tied or near or around the Levites. They, were, they had something to do with the serving in the temple or in the, uh, uh, the temple of God. They were, they were also named with the children of Solomon's servants. In Ezra chapter 2 and then in, in Nehemiah chapter 7, go back a few pages from Nehemiah 11, uh, verse 57. Now, this is when they were naming uh, all the different people. Remember, we preached on counting our blessings and all the different people that were coming back to Jerusalem. It says, the children of Solomon's servants, the children of Sotai, and children of uh, uh, Sephirath. Skip down to verse number 60. All the Nethanims and the children of Solomon's servants were 390 and 2. So with Solomon's servants, who were not Hebrews, uh, uh, you have mentioned the Nethanims. And I believe the Nethanims were Gentile servants in the house of God, in the, the, the temple of God. Now, exactly where they came from and how they got there, I, I couldn't be 100% certain, but I believe that we could see 2 Chronicles chapter 2. There were people that I believe were a remnant of those people. So you have the Nethanims who are servants. They're, they're laborers. They're, they're, they're physical labor, <coughs> excuse me, for the house of God. Then you have the Levites. We mentioned the Levites last week. They were mentioned as one of the ones that were to live in Jerusalem, but they were not to own property. Levites were specifically told not to have an inheritance. We're using our Bible a lot tonight. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Before Israel goes into the promised land, God gives Moses, instructions on what to do with the land and how to divide it up. And if we look at Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse number 12, and it says, and ye shall rejoice. Now it's talking about what to do when you get into the land. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God, ye and your sons and your daughters and your men servants and your maid servants and the Levite that is within your gates for as much as he hath no part nor inheritance with you. And so it says specifically, hey, you're not, to, that the Levites are not to have an impart, a part or an inheritance. And we think about the 12 tribes. You say, well, how are there 12 tribes? Well, uh, uh, there's not a tribe of Joseph. If you notice, it starts with Ephraim, goes down to Benjamin, and jo Joseph was one of the sons, uh, uh, sons uh, of, of uh, Israel. There's not a tribe of, of, of Joseph. Well, they split uh, Joseph's tribe into two tribes. And so uh, when it talks about the 12 different tribes receiving an inheritance, uh, uh, the Levites did not get an inheritance, but Joseph got a double portion. And, and we know that that's, the, uh, that's true, or that's the, that is uh, the case because, uh, uh, or that should be the case, that should have been the case, uh, because remember, uh, um, Israel came, Jacob, Israel came and blessed uh, Joseph's two sons before he died. And so you had 12 tribes that got an inheritance, but the Levites did not receive an inheritance. They were not to have some uh, land that belonged to them. That was, they were not supposed to have something that, that was passed down generation. They were supposed to serve in the house of God. And they were, by the way, supposed to be spread throughout the land in different cities. Now, if we read this, we might get the idea that God doesn't think too highly of servants and singers. But that's not so. The Nethanims were given a place to live, not an inheritance, but a place to live that was somewhat of a, a, a prestigious place. Now, I have no idea how comfortable it was, but it was a somewhat of a prestigious place. They were given Ophel. Now, you say, well, I've never heard of Ophel. Honestly, I hadn't heard much about Ophel until I started studying this. When I read verse number 21, but the Nethanims dwelt in Ophel, I thought that Ophel was, in a, was a city. And so I began to search for Ophel, a city, and Ophel is not a city. If you go back to, to uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 27, we'd find that Ophel, in fact, let's go ahead and do that, 2 Chronicles chapter 27, 
And verse number one, Jotham, Jotham was 20 and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was uh, uh, Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did, howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord. We preached about him a few weeks ago on a Sunday morning when we talked about uh, um, a, a uh, reasonable God. And the people did, did yet corruptly. Verse 3, he built the high gate of the house of the Lord, and on the wall of Ophel he built much. So Ophel is a part of the wall of Jerusalem. It's on the, the, the uh, western side of Jerusalem. It's a part, it's a, it's a large part of the wall in Jerusalem. Now, skip over from 2 Chronicles chapter 22, I'm sorry, 27, uh, over to 2 Chronicles chapter 33. Verse number 13, um, I won't take time to read 11, 12, and 13, the first part of 13, but the second part of 13 says, then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. And we can read the rest of it. I'm not trying to skip it because uh, uh, I don't want to read it or uh, it, 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 I'm trying to need to explain it away or anything like that. It, it, it uh, just does not uh, have anything to do with what we're reading right now. You certainly can read that uh, there on your own time. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Now, after this, he built a wall without the city of David. So beyond the walls of Jerusalem, Manasseh built a wall further past the walls of Jerusalem, without the city of Jerusalem, on the west side of Gihon, in the valley, even to the entering in of the fish gate, and he compassed about Ophel. So Ophel, being a, a taller place, a wall-type place, we, he, we understand now it's more of a tower. So he goes around Ophel, he surrounds Ophel, and raised it up a very great height. And he put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. So Manasseh here builds the wall beyond Jerusalem. Ophel now is inside of Jerusalem, and he builds Ophel up. So Ophel is a large tower in the city of Jerusalem. And it was built up, uh, it was built by Jotham and then built up by Manasseh. And so they were given this place, or they were told to live in this place, that, that doesn't say that they were given this. Notice it, verse 21, but the Nethanims dwelt in Ophel. And then it says who their leaders were, Ziha and Gispa. And then it mentions the Nethanims and, and their leaders there, or uh, uh, um, just really Uzai, uh, because then it, it mentions his genealogy of the uh, son of Bani, the son of Hashabiah, uh, the son of Hadaniah, the son of Micah, of the sons of Asaph, the singers, uh, were over the business of the house of God, for it was the king's commandment. Now notice this. It's the king's commandment that's important to notice concerning them that a certain portion should be for the singers due for every day. So you have two people here, two groups rather, the, the servants and the singers, they didn't have an inheritance. They didn't have something that was to be passed down from generation to generation, but they were given provisions. They were being provided for. And it says that there was the king's commandment concerning them that a certain portion should be for the singers due every day. So the singers, these uh, sons of Asaph, uh, the, the, uh, they were Levites. They were uh, um, of the tribe of Levi. Uh, uh, they were priests uh, or a, a form of the priests. Uh, type of priests, they were to be singing. And, and we talked about Asaph last week uh, um, and, and how important Asaph was to God and how that Asaph wrote uh, several books of, of the Bible. I think it was, we, we mentioned either 14 or 15 of the Psalms. Mentioned uh, He wrote several Psalms. He distributed several of the Psalms to other singers. And, and God had a, has a special place. That's where we kind of ended last week. We talked about how that God has a special place in his heart and a, a uh, uh, commandments on how to, to provide for them. Now, we're running out of time, so I won't take the time to go back to all these places, but we can go back to Numbers chapter 18. In fact, you know what? Let's just do this quickly. Go back to Numbers chapter 18, and we'd see not only that the the Levites now not the Nethanims because the Nethanims 
didn't exist until uh, later on. You didn't see the Nethanims until uh, in the book of uh, Chronicles, I believe was the first time you saw the book, of, uh, um, uh, was the first time you see the Nethanims. You don't see the Nethanims until, um, I think it's first Chronicles is when you first start seeing the, the Nethanims. But Numbers chapter 18, verse number 23, um, Let's look at, start reading verse number 20. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part and thy inheritance among the children of Israel. And behold, I have given the children of Israel all the tenth uh, in Israel. I'm sorry, given the children uh, of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance for their service, which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of their congregation. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the Lord of the congregation, and they shall be, bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance. Now, why were they given no inheritance? Was it because God was mean and, and didn't like the Levites? Was it because they had done something to deserve to be punished and never have? Uh, 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 a, a, an inheritance to, to be to have property that that they held the deed to if you will why well look at verse number 20 and the Lord spake unto Aaron thou shalt have no inheritance in their land neither shalt thou have any part among them first of all notice it says there and them He's, he said that, that, that belongs to the other tribes it doesn't even belong to you and it says I am thy part and thine inheritance God wants these servants and singers to care more about the things of God, more about the house of God than their own needs. God desires that these group of people, these Levites, the sons of Asaph, of course, Asaph didn't exist in, in Levites, in, in Aaron's time, but the, this, the, 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 the ones that were the, the, uh, the Levites, the, 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 the children, uh, of Aaron and, and the, the priests, God wanted them to be more concerned about him and his house than their own needs. God wants servants and singers to care more about the house of God than their own needs. And then secondly, God wants servants and singers to be cared for by others because they're caring for God's needs or the needs uh, uh, on earth. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 14. Normally mark these, and I did not. Deuteronomy chapter 14. Look at, um, look at verse 27, and, and we could read, start back at, um, um, we could start back probably at verse 21, but let's start, let's start at, just read at 27. And the Levite that is within thy gate, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. So God's desire was that the Levites be more concerned about the house of God, about the things of God, than, than any other needs. They were not to be concerned uh, about an inheritance. They weren't cons be, to be concerned about passing things down to uh, their next generation, to their children. Their, their, their desire, their, their purpose was to pass down a, a responsibility or a love for doing things for God to the next generation. That's what he told Aaron. He said, I am your inheritance. They're supposed to, to pass down a relationship with God to their, their children. God wants servants and singers to be cared for. Now, you say, well, are you saying that uh, pastors, um, those in the ministry are Levites? I can tell you this. I, though I, I am a, 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 a pastor, and um, I think when we talk about man of God, I think that's not something that I, that's, um, that's something that I would, I would call, uh, I would have the right to call myself. I think that's something that, 
that uh, God could use. I'm not going to say that I am some great man of God. I'm just saying that uh, though I'm a, a pastor, I am not a Levite. I am not of the tribe of, I can't be. I can't be of the tribe of Levi. I wasn't, I mean, I'm a Gentile. I wasn't born of the tribe of Levi. But God has this same sentiment of servants and singers. I'm not a Levi, I'm, I'm very clear. And so it's not the same thing, but there is a sentiment towards not just, by the way, say not just pastors, but what, what does the word deacon mean? The de word pastor, or the word deacon means servant. Those that are responsible for providing for the church and taking care of the church, our, our, our greatest desire should be to God and his house. And, I, and it's hard for me to, 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 uh, to preach this. I, I don't want to be self-serving or but those that are in charge of taking care of the things of God should be provided for. And, and I'm thankful. I'm not, I'm not preaching uh, um, at anyone. I'm not trying to get a, a, an offering or someone to send me. So I'm not trying to do that by any means. I'm well provided for. I'm very thankful for that. Um, but this was the next, this is the next uh, passage. I'm not going to, I just, I'm not going to skip over it. There is a group of people here, servants, the Nethanims, and singers the Levites, who are responsible for doing the things of the Lord, and they had no inheritance. They were to love God and love uh, the things of God more than they loved anything else, the Levites. And the Nethanims, they're just to serve. And I believe that those that are counted among those that are serving in the house of God are serving in the ministry of the Lord. Their greatest desire should be their greatest need their, their greatest love should be of God, not anything else. N no, no earthly uh, 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 treasures should have a hold of any uh, minister of the Lord. They should desire to serve the Lord first and foremost, and then be provided, by, uh, provided for by those who are uh, um, not in the ministry. Uh, again, it's not easy for me to preach this and and uh, I, I, don't, I don't like this. Again, I'm not a Levite. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not a Levite. Um, but as you look, whether it's uh, here in, in the book of Nehemiah or all the way through the book or through the Bible, through the entire book, you see these two principles being true. You have, you have men who are more concerned uh, about uh, the needs of God than the needs of their, their own needs and then people providing for them. Throughout Scripture, I mean, from the beginning to the end, you see that that the case, that be the case, and so um, I, I think it just it it's uh, something to point out. Again, I'm thankful for a church that does that. I'm thankful for a church that that takes care of the servants of God, and and uh, I, I'm not um, trying to preach at people. I'm just saying this is the next uh, uh, these are the next verses, and we want to preach what comes next. And so uh, I pray that we stay faithful. Help. I pray uh, uh, that you'd pray for me, that my greatest, my chiefest desire is to serve the Lord and love him and uh, love him more than anything else. All right, so let's do this. Let's, we'll do some prayer letters and then some praises. And I have some prayer requests that some folks have sent in. And um, as soon as we'll do those, we'll, take, uh, we'll, we'll let you go. And then hopefully, um, uh, I, I, I pray that you take some time to spend some time with your family in prayer. Maybe right now would be a good time to take out a piece of paper and a pen, and uh, note some of these prayer requests, note these, uh, these messengers that we have mentioned here. Um, I didn't even count them before we started. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Eight messengers here, and uh, we'll get into these. I won't read every part of every letter, but um, the Duns in China, uh, there's a whole paragraph about... Uh, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Uh, and then it says, uh, Be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us that the day of Christ is at hand. Good little devotion at the beginning of this, this letter. And then it says, uh, there's a title, uh, uh, the second paragraph is titled Silver Linings. Uh, by the way, <laughs> um, we've posted all these in the hallway in the church, if you get by there. 
we'll try to do something about getting them out to people by email. Um, that's something that, that we want to, um, we want to try to do. Um, I'm writing myself a note and hopefully Mrs. Martin is doing the same and we'll try to get prayer letters out to people. Uh, silver linings, as mentioned, it has been quite interesting to deal with the sheer terror and panic during the outbreak in China. Uh, I thought it interesting as I read through these eight letters, uh, one theme that came up in almost every letter is some, the, is the coronavirus. One, something that we're dealing with right now, you and I, because uh, we're meeting over computer, there's people dealing with the same thing. Uh, all in all, this is, has done nothing but increase the faith of New Hope Baptist Church and further prepare them for their future pastor. This spring, all the way through the fall, we will be busy preparing the church for this transition. We will be holding an all-night prayer meeting in April, bringing the specific need of a national pastor before the Lord. Additional, additionally, Brother Hong, who uh, is on schedule, be ordained this summer. We earnestly pray that come August, God will allow us to completely turn the work over. We thank you and humbly covet all the prayers, all the more your prayers for our next step. There are three specific areas we are praying about that take us further north of uh, Beijing. Already we have been witnessing and in initiating Bible studies in these places and are confident God will guide us, a uh, guide as he did in the establishment of New Hope Baptist Church. So people pray, pray for the Duns there in China as they pray and get prepared to turn their ministry over to a national. The Lemmas have a, a, a paragraph about a lady who was on her deathbed uh, dying of cancer, accepted Christ as their Savior, and uh, that's a good testimony there. They also mentioned Abigail, their daughter, got engaged, and so they're the lemmas there in Mexico. Pray for them, and uh, and uh, several uh, testimonies, actually, of people who have accepted Christ as their Savior, and thank the Lord for that. Brother Lowe in the Bahamas, and uh, uh, have a letter about how they started off the year with a Vision Sunday, and uh, they have uh, been preaching on witnessing and uh, had a visit a visiting pastor uh, come out and uh, and uh, from uh, in fact brother Hansen who we just took on we'll read his prayer letter in a minute his brother pastors in Minnesota and he came down and preached in the Bahamas and he starts talking about the different uh, people that went out uh, door knocking in their area and then the Newlands in in uh, Laos until recently, the, the Lao government has denied any cases of COVID-19 until this week. Over 200 people had the virus here in uh, uh, Vientiane, and I believe there are many, many more. Our Laotian language school has closed down and people are in a panic. We know who is in charge, but if we have to return to the States for health reasons, we will. Uh, while in Vietnam, we made it through SARS, the, the bird flu, the Ebola virus, and we are confident we will make it through this. Thank you for your thoughts. Uh, it seems that's the case uh, for us as well. Uh, the Lord will provide. Then I mentioned the, the letter from the Hansons there in Panama, who we just took on. And there at 34% has a, a, a testimony about going door to door and uh, leading someone to Christ. Pray for them on furlough. They're at 34%. And uh, no doubt they've already had meetings canceled. Uh, the Todd family, they were here at the, at the missions conference, Brian and Ashley Todd. And uh, they have, they're counting down the days to June where they head back to Costa Rica. He mentions, do continue to pray for La Iglesia, uh, La Iglesia Bautista de Esperanza, uh, church family in San Marcos de uh, Terrasu. And uh, we miss them and can't wait to see them in June. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks or just over a week for us not to see each other and can't imagine going a year without seeing your church. And then uh, his dad, Brother Ron Todd, sends a uh, sent a devotional quite long we won't le read that but uh, uh, a little over a page there just a just a devotional thought entitled clipped wings from brother ron todd and then the zemkis they have several uh, uh things they're mentioning that they're preparing for furlough pray for them as they prepare for furlough and um, they're supposed to head to the states on april 21st um uh, this letter was as dated March 20th, I, or March of 2020. I don't know if they'll be able to do that or not. The new coronavirus is a major topic of conversation and concern for many as it is spreading throughout Japan. Although we aren't holding ourselves up in our house, we aren't taking unnecessary risks either. As one church member said after discussion 
about uh, preventative measures, it's in God's hands. Uh, our prayer is that we won't get infected and that there will be no travel restrictions or quarantine as both we and the uh, Southerns will be traveling. So be in prayer for them. There probably is. Uh, I, I don't know that for sure, but uh, there has been across the country. Seven praises. Uh, praise the Lord for the nation of Israel. Praise the Lord for the faithfulness of God's people. I'm very thankful as um, the last couple uh, weeks uh, I noticed uh, texts and, and people um, logging in and very thankful for the faithfulness of God's people. Thankful for technology. Um, just 20 years ago, we couldn't do what we're doing tonight. I'm thankful for uh, God's protection. To my knowledge, there aren't anyone in our church that has coronavirus. I'm thankful for merry hearts. Proverbs 17, 22 says, Merry heart doeth good like medicine. And though we're not sick, uh, the medicine of merry heart, there's been many that have been joking and, and uh, not joking and not taking things seriously, but, a, but a having a merry heart, a happy heart. And uh, I'm thankful for God's people having a merry heart. I'm thankful we can put our trust in, in, in the deliverance from, uh, of the noisome pestilence. Psalm 91.3 talks about God delivering from the noisome. Noisome doesn't mean noisy, loud. It means harmful pestilence. And, and I'm thankful that we can, uh, uh, we can trust in the one who delivers us from the noisome pestilence. I'm thankful tonight. I have no idea who's next. We have a rotation, the, the last one always. Uh, for a Sunday school class or a ministry. I have no idea who's next. Uh, I didn't get that um, note, but I have the sound men. Uh, I'm thankful that uh, uh, for Brother Armfield leading those guys, Brother Tolari and Brother McCusker are normally back there, and I'm thankful for their, um, their faithfulness in the sound booth. I am over time here. Let me read these prayer requests, and we'll be dismissed. Um, Joanne Drago uh, texted in if I can have the church pray about Zach. He was involved in an accident late Friday night. He is doing better. Nothing is broken, but he bruised up and sprained, has a sprained ankle, so he can't go back to work yet. So continue to pray for him. He uh, uh, is working at a restaurant, so he can go back um, if, as soon as he's able to. Uh, my wife mentions um, her friend or our friend from college, Rebecca Terry who uh, is having pregnancy comp uh, complications. So Zach uh, Drago and then Rebecca Terry. And then Miss Sarah Thiesing uh, texted in this afternoon. Uh, my sister Becky Thiesing uh, that has mental retardation, keeps falling and can't walk. And then a praise. I praise God for such a wonderful church and all the people praying for me. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, we are praying for you, Miss Sarah. Uh, Brother Philippos, pray for Gina, one of our closest fr family friends admitted in the hospital in serious uh, condition and on a ventilator. Uh, she is a young lady with three little children. So Gina, and it doesn't have a last name, but um, uh, we'll pray for, her, for Gina, a friend of the Philippos. Uh, Miss Roma Martin says, hoping to log in tonight, been in bed uh, all day in pain. So be in prayer for Miss Martin, Miss Roma, uh, as she's uh, there at Big Ben Woods. And uh, uh, we're not able to meet with their, her on uh, three Sundays a month, uh, but continue to pray for them. And then pray for some friends of ours. There's a friend that we have who's a pastor in Philadelphia. His name is Burton uh, Gates. His wife's name is Kara Burton and Kara Gates. Uh, I mentioned to somebody, I don't remember if I mentioned it on the broadcast or whatever this thing is, <laughs> uh, the live stream uh, last week, um, but uh, they, he's a pastor in Philadelphia. They had a meeting week before last, and their, their speaker, the, 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 the man that spoke for them, another pastor, uh, had coronavirus and didn't know it. And so he gave it to many of the people in the church. Brother Burton and Miss Kara both have it. Uh, they're doing some better, but they are, they are their next-door neighbor. I'm talking about their houses in Philadelphia. They're row houses, and so they share a wall. Is Miss, Miss Kara Gates' uh, parents. And her dad, Ben Cordell, C-O-R-D-L-E, has coronavirus and uh, is in the hospital. The Gates, Brother Burton and Miss Kara, stayed at home, and they're about over it. But their dad, or her dad, uh, has it. So please be in prayer for Ben Cordell and his father-in-law of a pastor there in Philadelphia. And then Brother Ethan Schrock says, I have a praise. Janice Turner, the girl who tried to kill herself. Uh, he mentioned that prayer request, I think, about two weeks ago. Maybe it was last Sunday, but it seems like it was two, more than that a few weeks ago. 
uh, tried to kill herself as home now and doing much better. My friend from work is so thankful for our church and all the prayers for his family recently. So praise the Lord uh, for, uh, for the testimony there and that she is doing better. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness. We pray that you'd bless this time of prayer. Uh, help us draw nigh to you during this time and that we'd always honor and glorify you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, church. Uh, it's good to see uh, 55 participants and uh, some are already logging off. We'll see you next time and uh, we'll be sending out the, the link Saturday evening for the Sunday services. It's good to see everyone or see everyone's names and uh, um, Lord bless, we'll be praying for you. I know that uh, we're starting to get a little stir crazy, but uh, we'll be praying for each one of you and uh, pray that God uh, takes care of you and keeps you well during this, um, during this situation. Lord bless. Have a good evening.